<laughs> the 90s alternative music wasteland. What a place to visit. I pity anyone whose creative endeavors or outlook on life was in any way inspired by this abomination of a music movement. But even I have to admit that I do like some of these bands and some of these songs. And also, Korn sucks. <laughs> but none of those songs or bands were anything I would consider lasting. Even when it was all shiny and new and marketed directly towards bozos like me at the time, I knew a lot of this stuff was ordered to go. And they forgot the fucking napkins. Now keep in mind, these are thoughts of an out-of-touch boomer in training who spent years making a documentary about a Corey Feldman movie, which you can watch now. Subscribe, damn it! And let me know your thoughts about the band in the comments. As I, and anybody else who didn't make it out to any Summerland festivals, find out what the fuck happened to Lit. Lit had their mediocre beginnings in 1986 when friends Jeremy Popoff and Kevin Baldis met in school and started to make some noise. They eventually reformed with Jeremy's brother AJ on drums when he was just 14 and formed the metal band Razzle. And with yet another retooling, this time AJ going from drums to vocals and his brother to guitar. And with future lit drummer recruited Alan Schellenberger, they changed their name to Stain. And I'm assuming there must have been a shitload of bands with that moniker, and in 1994 they changed it to Lit. On April 1st, 1997, the group released Tripping the Light Fantastic. It was released on indie label Malicious Vinyl Records. Malicious Vinyl went out of business shortly after the album was released which left the band unsigned once again. And I admit, I heard their first album after their meteoric yet brief rise, and while a few songs would be played in live sets from then on, and even some re-recorded for their albums, it seems the band were trying to go for a completely different look and feel here, doing their best Alice in the Garden impressions. An unreleased video from the time even showing off AJ's unfortunate tattoo choice. Don't get tattoos of your band's name prematurely. Or at all. The album and videos basically got buried from this time, but this didn't dissuade the band. They would once again retool some things, mainly their look and sound, and would tirelessly pursue a record deal by showcasing for labels. Eventually, landing with RCA Records in 1998. Now that the guys went from post-grunge clones to flaming dice enthusiasts, they also came with a more palatable and marketable pop-punk sound, you know, for that huge audience at the time. The band released their second album, A Place in the Sun, in 1999. And anybody who was there remembers this riff playing over and over again for months. But it also unfortunately makes the band sound like replicas of a dozen other post-grunge contemporaries, like Better Than Ezra or Less Than Jake. But either way, the album would solidify their spot in pop culture, and some of the tracks were catchy in a not-too-bad way. The band would tour relentlessly, and in 2001, they released Atomic, their third studio album, again released from RCA Records, although it peaked at number 36 on the US Billboard 200. But the label would give the band another strong push regardless, featuring them in video games and in multiple film soundtracks for Mr. Deeds, Titan AE, Out Cold, and American Pie 2. But after the highest charting single reaching number 10 and a big tour with Kid Rock, the band were let go from RCA, and this would be the last time they would release under a major label. Lit would then tone things down a bit, and have a shift in sound, 
taking on a smaller, more intimate club tour, and releasing their self-titled effort on the indie label DRT Records, as well as their own label. The album had a successful single reaching the top 40 charts and peaked at number 113 on the US Billboard 200 and number 6 on the top independent album charts. This was a good move from the band. While they weren't breaking any new ground or anything, they were maintaining a sound and making music and touring for a solid fan base. But unfortunately for the band, they would find tragedy before finding more success. In 2008, drummer and founding member Alan Schellenberger was diagnosed with terminal brain cancer. This caused the band to cancel a huge tour with KISS as he was undergoing clinical trials. Benefits would be held featuring bands like No Doubt and Sugar Ray, and Alan would play as much as he could. His last show with the band was September 28, 2008, and he died at the age of 39 on August 13, 2009. The Pop-Offs would also face tragedy when their parents were in a bad auto accident, one of them not making it. On November 23, 2009, Lit played their first concert since Alan Schellenberger's death, and after a lot of speculation whether or not to go on as a band with new material and such, they decided it would make for a good tribute to their friend. And after an eight-year hiatus, The View from the Bottom was released in 2012 on Megaforce Records, a more tongue-in-cheek and self-aware album with some much deeper lyrics in places than we'd ever seen from AJ Papa. The album received mixed reviews. All Music praised the album, giving it 3 out of 5 stars, stating, One gets the sense that Lit are re-engaged here both emotionally and creatively. Ultimately, while the album may be about the band's view from the bottom, as the title of the rousing set closer implies, Lit definitely got it right this time. However, Rolling Stone was less enthusiastic, claiming that the riffs sounded repurposed for sports and strip bars. While singles were released and some music videos were shot, the only notable tour they did was the Summerland Tour, which in so many words is where bands like this go to die. But as said before, they had a very solid fan base and were able to still be lit. But with further changes in sound and whatnot, giving off a kind of hello fellow rocker vibe, you couldn't help but get the impression that they were kind of at the end of their rope. And just kind of forgettable. It appears their place in the sun had indeed shifted. We didn't start a rock band to follow the rules, said Jeremy Popoff in an interview. If we wanted to follow the rules and live in a box, starting a band would not have been the chosen path. We're making music for ourselves first and foremost. The band would basically become a nostalgia act, not really recording or releasing any new stuff. These Summerland bands tend to make that a thing. However, they would soon announce to fans that they were indeed working on new music, this time in Nashville. You know, a lot of bands record in Nashville, why not? I mean, it's Nashville. But this would prove to be yet another retooling of Lit, this time being the most drastic. They would announce the premiere of their brand new music video on CMT, of all places, and release the country album these are the days in 2016. This was a complete departure from anything the band had done before. And I just don't see how any fans of their previous stuff would buy into this. Seriously, I mean. They went from raiding Chris Cornell's closet, to bowling shirt enthusiasts, to kneeling for the cross and standing for the flag in just a 20 year career. And I for one, was goddamn surprised by this. <laughs> Clearly, they alienated their fan base, a sentiment shared by lead singer AJ Popoff. He has stated in an interview, I think it was maybe some of our best stuff ever, but we kind of realized that it may have been confusing to some of our hardcore fans and the industry alike. No shit. Four years later in 2020, on their own label, 
brothers AJ and Jeremy Popoff would release a music video for the single Sons and Daughters from their new band Popoff Brothers. We decided that putting out music as Popoff Brothers could give us an outlet for songs that we write that might not jive with the lit brand, said AJ Popoff. We didn't set out to be country artists. We just love writing songs and we spend a lot of time in Nashville. And the way we write today is much different than the way we did 20 years ago. When we sit down and write a song now, it's usually during the day with acoustic guitars, not in a sweaty warehouse in Anaheim, plugged in at full volume, drinking beer in the middle of the night. So now, nearly five years after Lit's last album, the band has still not officially broken up. But they also aren't really pursuing things much. Not really. According to the Pop-Off Brothers official website, AJ and Jeremy plan to release more Pop-Off Brothers songs this year and are also working on new lit music, which AJ describes as old school lit. He adds, Our personal playlists don't only have one genre of music, and I don't think our fans listen to music that way either. Separating the music of lit and Pop-Off Brothers will just be a way to give our fans more diversity, all while allowing us the creative freedom to write whatever we're feeling at the moment. Hey, you gotta respect that. You gotta hand it to the guys. With various label support and tragedies along the way, they still managed to wind up doing exactly what they wanted to do. You just gotta respect that. While most other bands from that time simply did just fade away, Lit still has a strong hardcore fan base, and with the new music from Pop Off Brothers and the crossover type stuff, I can actually see it growing. I'll be watching to see what happens next in the saga of Lit. Don't worry, I'll let you know. Be sure to subscribe to stay notified. Recently, they did release an unreleased 2008 video featuring their old sound, but you know, we all know that if Lit never played another note and simply faded into obscurity. They will live on forever on local mediocre rock radio stations until the end of time. So thank you. And if you know the I'm sure. Time,